It's big plays. What a play! Bad days. I bet this guy sends an award's a hundred bucks. And parlays. That's the one. Parlay. Big plays, bad days, and parlays on Hurt at Sports. You have to place a wager. Saxophones are on, and that means big plays, bad days, and parlays is back. Troy Aldridge, James Merrick, Andrew Rogers here. And boys, nothing like our week before. I'll just say that. Last weekend was not fun. You can't win them all. Play, play, play. Yours was yours was similar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Piss> off. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's true. Stop it. Stop it. I don't need this negativity. Your wallet is crying. It it is. And it's for more than one reason, and we'll get into that in a sec. But um, anybody, uh, did anybody make money at all? I I did on Friday, not Saturday or Sunday, but I did Friday. Um, I hit a golf bet on the President's Cup. I bet on a couple um, pairs to win. Only was like seventy to eighty dollars, so I probably almost broke even. Sunday was not fun to me. It was not good to me. James, uh, President's Cup. I, I was all over Max Homa. He got held out of the matchup on Saturday. Ended up going four zero and zero. Spieth went five zero and zero, so he had more points. So that went mm-hmm. that bet. I didn't know it was that um, close. I hit. I had fifty on Adams anytime touchdown and fifty on Chase anytime touchdown. You're insane. So that saved my weekend. That just made my. Who money has back. fifty dollars just to toss lost. around? So. Who has fifty dollars like you just to say, "Hey, I'm I'm placing He's it on Adams." Accumulate, accumulate, it, Mister. He's Mister Accumulate, dude. I don't know how. <laughs> it's from those. Like, uh, it's from those first couple weeks. Good for you. Good for Literally. you. He's Jeez. been gambling with the same hundred dollar bill since. <laughs> <laughs> since last, last May. October. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say. Since Nam. My Goodness. <laughs> insane. Good for James. Good for James. Jerk. Outside of that, yeah, college, call me. college football uh, for me uh, was, was okay, actually, on Saturday. I shouldn't say I didn't uh, fully win on Saturday. I did place individual bets throughout the weekend, and that helped me. I took what I put in a parlay and then put individual bets out on there, and I did take home uh, a minor return on that investment. But uh, as for Friday, I hit a college football parlay. The first inning over and under that we talked about on last week's show ended up hitting, so I hope people at home rode that one as well. But I got to tell you, it was a struggle for a lot of teams. A lot of teams. Jimmy G pulled a Dan Orlovsky, and Miami pulled a Mark Sanchez. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is risky. <laughs> oh my goodness! Blocked indeed. Oh, he's he oh, 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 I don't. I don't know if they really saw what happened until it went into slow motion. <laughs> and I am actually shocked. It was that Kevin Harlan. Was that? Was that Kevin Harlan on the call? I'm asking you guys. I feel like it <laughs> might have been Tariko. Yeah, I don't know. Can we hear it again? I'm not sure. Mike Tariko? I don't know. This is this is risky. It is, oh my goodness! Blocked indeed. That's Harlan. Let's see if we get a. Oh, it hit oh, the, the personal protector. That's Harlan. That's Kevin Harlan. And Blocked indeed. That, that he he is the recognizable voice from. 2K. So think back to NBA 2K, right. Troy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Definitely. Um, so it wasn't just a struggle for us out there. It was a struggle for a lot of NFL teams. The NFL Sunday was wonky with the Chiefs losing to the Colts, the Jaguars absolutely annihilating the Chargers. We saw, uh, obviously, a Sunday night football game that didn't feature a touchdown, more of a Big Ten stat line of punt. Turnover on downs, punt, turnover, field goal, punt, end of half. The sports bookies (laughs) just are getting hammered when the game's going like that. (laughs) (laughs) Hammered. For real. But, okay, so I have have a story for James. Uh, Troy was obviously there, but James, we were on the golf course, and I couldn't watch any of the college football games this weekend because it was right Sunday afternoon. We watched a little bit 
in the morning at IHOP, at IHOP, which featured a fight between a customer and an employee, which was absolutely nuts. This guy at came IHOP? at IHOP, dude. This 11 guy eleven in the morning. This guy came into IHOP and was just chilling at at the counter. It was a weird counter though, almost a circle, so you could walk all the way around. It wasn't like you know put into a corner. It was just right in the middle of the floor. And that's where they had the registers. And it was three registers in that circle. And we were posted up in the booth right by the door. We saw, we had TV uh, viewing. So we got to watch uh, Maryland and Michigan play. And then we had some games up on our phone. But the real entertainment was when uh, a guy that was like, what, Troy, would you say like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six walked in? He was a big dude. <laughs> he was huge. Um, came to the counter, and then one of the servers was just somebody that really liked to talk shit. Um, he was basically... But had a good personality. Yeah, he had, he had a great really personality. Fun, friendly personality. He, he basically liked to push people's buttons in a way. And he was talking to this guy, and I don't even know if there was a true argument, or his name was also James, the server, uh, or Hilarious. if he was just talking to him. Like I don't great. think he needed anybody else for the conversation he was having. Um, he was just kind of talking, but he was directing a lot of statements to this guy. This guy was like, dude, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not. Uh, but he was saying how like Alabama's team would still lose to the worst team in the NFL. Um, you know, that conversation, it's, it, it, that conversation is almost like the MJ LeBron argument. Like, you know, it just happens every year. Once Alabama is good again, they're like, oh, well, they would still lose to the Raiders, who are 0-3 right now, which is absolutely true. Um, right, right. Are they the worst team in the NFL? No, but it, it, it is a valid point. But it's that, it's that same hypothetical conversation that always pops up. Well, this guy was like, dude, I, I'm not arguing with you. Well, we kept eating our breakfast, and then all of a sudden we hear James just screaming out like, bro, don't call me a third grader. Don't call me that. I'm not a third grader. Don't call me that. <laughs> and, uh, this guy started to like approach him, like get up in his grill. And at first we thought they were kidding that they were like, I thought they were friends. Yeah. Like, just you know, off. just goofing off toward each other. And this dude full out shoves James against the wall at IHOP, Ass <laughs> like assaults James in the IHOP. Pushes him up against the wall. He's screaming, I'm going to call the police. Yeah, he's walking around like, I'm oh going to call the cops. God. This guy, The people backstay, uh, backstage, back in the kitchen, are like, just give him his food and let him go. Just give yeah. him his food. But this guy was just, you know, pushing and shoving shit. And he's just running his mouth still because now he's, now he's ticked off. Because he's yeah. like, don't put your hands on me in my workplace, which I get that. But at the same time, I'm like, well, James, you could have, like, just stopped talking. <laughs> you know, you could have just went right. back to doing your job at this point. But I don't think James was at fault at all in this situation. This guy just came up and pushed him against the wall. The photo started to fall down. It was then tilted. And <laughs> yeah, if, this man should have just went through a drive through. If you don't want if you're going to go in and get your food and have that type of personality and not be able to be social and just goof around with a guy that's just trying to be funny, dude. Go through the drive through Don't come in and get your food. <laughs> well, the best part so was... You guys broke it up, right? Yeah, exactly. I looked at Troy and I said, it looks like our UFC fight started early. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this guy, you know, pushed him off, got his food, left. Well, then James started following him out into the parking lot. Like, he had his drawstring bag on. He went to the <laughs> counter, was taking off his apron, and people were holding him back in the restaurant and uh, did not allow him to go out in the parking lot. So he was and saying... We just hear... James, into my office now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And oh, but we no. stood up for we him. We stood up for we, him. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we said we he's not the, at fault. The people that, yeah, he was just, you know, having a normal conversation and the dude overreacted. But, yeah. That's yeah. insane. We saw a fight yeah, at IHOP maybe. and then we went to go play golf. And this is where my story was, was going. So I had a seven-leg parlay. And uh, I'll, I'll read it off to you now because I was not overly prepared and didn't have that bet slip saved, rightfully so, after what had I happened have, to me. Yes, um, I would never want to see that again. So I, I took Coastal Carolina Moneyline on Thursday. I talked about them on the podcast, really mm -hmm. liked them, money in the bank, check mark. Then I took the over in the Florida-Tennessee game, which, I, you know what, let's, let's stop here. Let's, let's go right here. I, before that game started, I took Clemson minus six and a half. OK, and Clemson 
was playing from behind against Wake Forest most of that game. Thank God it got pushed to overtime because that was my only saving grace at this point. But now I'm just like, man, this Clemson team is so much better than this Wake Forest team. Like, just stop them because they got the ball first. So they score, then stop them, and then um, you will go on offense. Oh, vice versa. So Wake Forest scored. Clemson followed with a score. Clemson gets the ball on offense. Perfect situation for me. Because now if they score, all they have to do is stop them, right? Money. Because Wake Forest won't kick a field goal if they score a touchdown, so it's a lock. Well, that situation played out, second overtime. All of a sudden, I see Clemson scored a touchdown. And here's a live look at my reaction to the touchdown, broken down by Troy and our other buddies. He doesn't know. Oh, Oh, wow. This is kind of... Someone's got to tell him. No one should tell him. No one's got to tell him. No one should tell him. He doesn't know, and I can't wait to see his face when he finds out. (laughs) He's taking his shirt off. The ref is in trouble. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. The heartbreaker that went through my head when I saw missed two-point conversion while we're looking for our ball in the woods. Dude. Missed two point conversion. (laughs) Dabo Sweeney goes for two. You're the better team in this football game. The. By far the better team. I know your defense wasn't living up to their hype going into this matchup or even throughout the matchup, but what kind of confidence does that show in your group of players to say we have to go for two here because I don't believe you're going to stop Wake Forest and I want them to have to try to score twice before we stop them and go to a third overtime? What kind of confidence do you instill in your players at that point, especially on the defensive side of the ball? Only thing I can think of is maybe someone big on the defense got hurt. I don't. That's all I got. I don't like to hear that, Troy. If you're right, I, I, nobody, nobody has a response that is going to make me feel better. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we you watch everything won. else. Does that make you feel better? Well, you did money line, right? <laughs> yep, yep, sure did. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> so at this point, right? At this point, we knew we are rooting against the bet, right? Because you hope to God that this isn't hitting to preface. This was $30 to win $1,625 would have been huge. Don't mean to laugh. I just would have been huge. So after, I guess, after watching all the rest of the bets hit over 60 and a half in Florida, Tennessee, Arkansas plus three and a half, which that game was, they should have won. That was atrocious. Over 33 and a half in the Vandy Bama first half, which ended up being that like 48 or 52 yard field goal that <laughs> went into halftime. I couldn't believe it. I, if, if I needed He's that awesome. one, he would have missed. If I needed 100%. it, he would have Over 68 in Charlotte, South Carolina, which Charlotte always hits the over. In Maryland, plus 21 and a half, I took extra on the spread to cover against Michigan. I didn't have to, but I did. And that was a safe play. It ended up hitting. All of those hit. So, what does every good degenerate sports better lo- do when you lose big on a day? Gamble Wait. more money. You gamble more money. Get after it the next day. Or that night. <laughs> or or you head to the casino. <laughs> yeah, like the hour after maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'd like to think I'm not too much of a psycho. <laughs> but I am. I was a psycho. And I pulled out a boatload more of money because... I was hammered. We were having a great time despite this sports bet missing. Golf was fun. We went to Hooters. That was cool. No, I I didn't have fun at golf either. Yeah, well, you didn't play well. I I spent more time in the woods and the sand than actual grass. So (laughs) it was fun. Um, So just all in all, the weekend didn't go well. Once Saturday hit, it just didn't go well. It was fun. It was great company. But... In regards to my wallet, Troy alluded to it. Oh, yeah, I'm majorly you. down. Thank I am majorly down. Dragging me along through that fun ride. I had a blast. And uh, college football could have saved me, as I said. Could have absolutely saved me, but it didn't. And NFL didn't go well on Sunday. Um, so what happens next, guys? We need a rebirth. Come on. you comes inside of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that type of rebirth, but you guys... I just, That's yeah. You guys understand what That's I mean? It's a little different. Yeah, we don't we don't need that. Can we hear that one one more time? 
Ayuk comes inside of him. Yeah, yeah. No, wasn't really he's, talking he about that one. Stopped right there. <laughs> well, no. He they just, they oh, just grabbed the snippet. <laughs> no, that was the whole broadcast. Yeah, yeah that was it. That was it. I, I grabbed it from uh, from the wrong NFL. Um, that's okay. <laughs> well, Friday was a dramatic day, though. Very dramatic day because Albert Pujols hit his 700th home run. Pujols sets one in the air. It's deep to left. Taylor's back at the wall. It's 700. Albert Pujols has joined the 700 home run club. Playoffs for me, not you. Just wait. We'll see you. We'll see you there. (laughs) Troy is so badly hoping that the Phillies, Phillies fan up there, are going to make it to the playoffs in St. Louis. We would love to meet the Phillies. I was 14 the the last time they were in the playoffs. I just turned 26, so... What happened in uh, 2011? There it goes. I think think, uh, the Cardinals were playing some team that way, and uh, the last out, uh, another guy from St. Louis ended up like... Ending his career, right? Not necessarily, right? And then you guys had you guys had really good pitching that year too. Cardinals, not so much. I wonder how they won. That was that was wild. That was wild. Oh, yeah, oh! I don't know. Did 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 the Cardinals end up going far that year? No, no, 20, Twenty no. eleven. No, 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 no. Magic happened late. Nothing, nothing like that. No, I could have sworn there was a guy named David Freezer that did something. David, David Free, mm. Free, Freeze, Freeze did something. Did. Refrigerator, refrigerator. That's who it was. Yeah. Luke Combs David made a song about the refrigerator door. Yeah, William Perry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 2011 was the last meeting with the Phillies, or no? Yes. In the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Well. Maybe it happens again this year for you. But what's what's really crazy about Pujols hitting that home run on Friday is because our guy, Greg Amsinger, he's a Lindenwood graduate, came out of the Lindenwood Broadcasting Program, now works for MLB Network, if you guys weren't familiar, actually predicted this moment would happen on this day before the season even started. Albert's going to play so much more than people think. He is. He's a draw, and he's going to be productive. He will reach 700 career home runs. I do have bad news, Cardinal fans. I have bad news. He's going to hit his 700th career home run on the road. And only fitting it will be in the regular way. No. <laughs> Friday night in Los Angeles in September. A Clayton Kershaw. Oh, oh, man, that's a okay? crazy so That's when it's going to happen against his former teammate. Hall of Famer versus Hall of Famer. It'll be on the road. I can't wait to see it. Now, it didn't happen against Kershaw, but, but insane. That was what, in April? That I think it was March, if I'm correct. Good wow, God, dude, that's, that's unbelievable. Awesome. How can you get that right? Like, it, how, how did process of elimination? Yeah, I didn't know he was going to get this bet that. Plus a million? Yeah. Well, <laughs> process of elimination, you would think, okay, I got to choose a game toward the end of the season. Play, of course. Right. But to choose the right game, the right series on yeah, the dude, day. Unbelievable. It, it, obviously, it wasn't against Kershaw, which you can't predict that back in March, April. Who knows what the rotation's looking like at that point? But and the fact that he hit two to do it, he wasn't even. But at that's insane. Six ninety nine. That's like a Simpsons moment. That's literally like Matt Groening predicting almost everything in history after nineteen ninety. I think I think Am Singer's on his payroll. <laughs> Could be. Now, guys, game time. I want to play a game with you both. I want to go through things that the Simpsons predicted. But I want you to tell me if they actually predicted it on the show or if I made up that they predicted it on the show. So these are all events that happened in history. Okay? So I'm I'm not like saying that um, X team won the NFL or won the Super Bowl in this year and it ends up being 07 instead of 06. Like, I'm not saying that. Like, all of these are exact dates, but you have to tell me if it was predicted 
on The Simpsons. Are you ready? Bring it on. We'll challenge you guys one, one, one each, one each. Okay, so let, let's let's make this a little more juicy. So, Troy, you're going to be playing for somebody. And James, you're going to be playing for somebody. And go, we'll, we'll do anybody that's in your life today. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. Just name the person you're playing for. And if you win, I'll get some merch and send it their way. Oh, uh, I'll do my mom. Uh oh, Moses, she's been tuning in. Uh oh, there's one. We love Michelle. Uh, I'll, I'll also do my mom, Beverly Mary. She's <laughs> thought, also been tuning in. I thought you were gonna say <laughs> I'll also do Troy's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee her some merch. So, so we have Michelle and Beverly. Yeah. Okay. Your sons are playing for you too. Uh, I, I wish you the best. We'll see how well they know their pop culture and U.S. or world Is it history. Your fault? No, I'm just going to read a prediction and you tell me yes or no if it happened on the show. Oh, okay, so yes or no. Okay, let's go. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Same odds. 50-50. I like it. Okay. That's my only shot. Did the Simpsons predict it? A Super Bowl winner? Yes. Oh, yes. It was I supposed to be answering to. You guys are both supposed to be answering, but you guys can wait. We can agree, right? Yeah. You guys can absolutely agree. Oh, that's one each. Look, they yeah. did predict a Super Bowl winner. They predicted Washington to beat Buffalo back in the nineties, and that episode was because, oh, what's her name? What's what's the daughter's name? Lisa. I Lisa. Watched more Simpsons than I did. Lisa said. I can't love my dad anymore if Buffalo wins, but I can still love my dad if Washington wins. <laughs> uh, so one each, one each. Okay. Let's go. Predicted a faulty voting machine. Yes. I'm going to go true as well. That sounds 100% right. That is correct. They predicted the faulty machine that ended up happening in Pennsylvania during Obama's second term. So, and it was actually Homer wanting to vote for Barack Obama in that term. And they, they predicted that there would be a faulty voting machine. You think they know? <laughs> do they allow them they to do that? I, you know what? That's why I think a lot of people are on Matt Groening's payroll. Like the whole world. Simpsons right. runs the country. <laughs> they do. They run the country. And they, we'd be better off if they did. Um, how about this? Predicted... A magician attacked by a white tiger. True. Yeah, might as well. True. Unbelievable. I thought I was going to trick you guys there. That actually happened on the Simpsons. <laughs> they predicted that. Um, okay. Predicted. I that it was funny. Predicted COVID-19. False. False. Unbelievable. They are on fire. Four for four. They did not predict COVID. <laughs> now, I was hoping you guys... I should have said pandemic. They predicted a pandemic to happen. Uh, but that's okay. Yeah, that's that okay. would be. Predicted FaceTime. False. Uh, is this the last question? <laughs> no, there's plenty more. Okay, false. You guys are both incorrect. Oh, they did goodness. indeed predict the feature of FaceTime. Oh. Predicted restaurant grease thefts. False. True. James is correct. It is true. He has taken the lead. Is there any false? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. There's plenty. There's plenty. Predicted the merger between 21st Century and Disney. True. Both are true. James, no going just true now. No going just the same as Troy, just to stay with your one point <laughs> lead. Genius. I know what <laughs> you you're never thinking. Stated that before we started. <laughs> you have to answer <laughs> first now. <laughs> oh. uh, no, 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 no. Predicted the Cubs World Series win. True. I want to say yes. True. It is false. They did not predict the, car, the Cubs World yeah, Series win. Because it seems like something that they would predict after hundreds of years. Fair point. Right. Predicted the BP oil spill. 
So that yeah, was balls. Deep Water Horizon. What'd you guys say? I'm sorry. False. True. It is true. Just kidding. It's false. Troy, back Wait. in it. What? Is it actually? Troy is back in it. It was Let's false. Let's go. <laughs> I thought I remember that episode. Well, if it's on there, then I could be wrong. I just looked all of these up about 30 minutes before the show, so I didn't do Perfect. too much prep. Hey, tie game. Tie game. How many I have left? Seven? Ooh. Predicted the information leaking by Edward Snowden. True. True. Both are true. Correct. Well done. Well done. Predicted the start of Facebook. False. False. <laughs> you guys are both correct. All right, let's have James go first this time because Troy went first last time. We'll keep alternating now. Predicted a corruption with FIFA. True. True. Both are true. Both are correct. Predicted Donald Trump would be president. False. True. That is true. That is true. There's no false. I'm telling you. <laughs> Predicted the start of legalizing marijuana in Colorado. True. False. It is false. Yes. <laughs> Predicted Nobel Peace Prize winners. True. True. Both correct. Both correct. <laughs> this is so nerve wracking. Predicted Hurricane Katrina. False. <laughs> both are correct. <laughs> That's all I had. So I guess we're sending merch to both your parents. <laughs> yeah, <let's go. laughs> because at this point, I I just battle be, for the ages. Dude, I'd just be making insane. up stuff at this point, and everything would be false. Like predicted the start. Dude, every of single podcasting. one of mine, complete guess. <laughs> Literally, James, are I you a, are you a Simpsons lover? Who'd you just wave yeah, off yeah. there? Like you had a you had a fly. Somebody, somebody, de yeah, somebody definitely came into the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swat him like a fly. <laughs> here. The fuck, you know my, you know my schedule. Unbelievable. All right, Troy and James. After the show, we'll get t-shirt sizes go. and send those to your parents. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations to Michelle and Beverly. <laughs> what a, what a run that was. You guys were probably sweating as they were. I worked going hard that. for that. Yeah. <laughs> They are still yeah, sweating, and we haven't even entered putting our money on the line just yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done, boys. Well done. Let's go into our locks of the week. I, I, I'm happy we had some fun there because that was, that was a good transition from talking about how Greg Amsinger was potentially Matt Groening back in the early parts of this year, and now it's time for us to predict the future as well. Let's get on the Simpsons payroll and get going. Thursday Night Football is now. Let's talk. Who do you like? Go ahead, James. Um, I like I like Mixon to get his first touchdown of the year. I think that's pretty crazy. The Bengals are one of the few teams without a rushing touchdown still. Um, They've been so I like bad. Waddle. I like, yeah. I like Waddle, uh, Eli Apple, and Tyreek are going to have a fun <laughs> battle. But um, I honestly like Tyreek to score on him too. Tua said he's going to be throwing him yeah. the ball whenever Eli's on him. So that's kind of hard. That's to sweet not, that he said not that. that with. Not a yeah, lot of quarterbacks right? would it's say like, that. I thought he was questionable. Is that like not a thing? He's completely fine. Uh, Tyreek wow. was questionable. No, Tua. Sorry, just because of the oh. concussion stuff that they oh, might have messed up. He's totally fine. He's good. Cool. Yeah, I think Waddle's like actually the most questionable, but gotcha. Yeah, I think he'll be all right. But they, yeah, they, I don't they know. say uh, sorry to interrupt you here, James. Uh, they say they're optimistic about Tua to be able to play. Cool. Optimistic. Mm. Well, that means yeah, that he's would playing. Suck if he didn't, that means he's playing. Yeah. He's playing if they're optimistic. They they when he came and finished the game. 
Right. Well, they always say that too. Like, it's like, Ooh, I don't know if he's going to play. And then he ends up playing. So they if they're optimistic, yeah. like that, that to me is a guarantee when it comes to reports. So you said, you said Waddle Hill and Mixon, just those three guys, or do you like any other things mixed in there? Uh, I mean, I like Chase to get in the end zone as well. If you're going to do a oh, touchdown okay. parlay, that I'd, always, I'd definitely do four, especially to make the odds better. Um, I think it could be a high-scoring game. I don't necessarily think it will, but I definitely think it could be, and I would like it to be just for betting purposes. I think but, that's easy. Um, Those are four super talented guys, and we haven't right. seen four guys like this on Thursday yet. It's pretty. I love whenever we get guys like that, and it's easy to make like a prop bet too for a same game parlay. Troy, what do you like? Um, I'm thinking Chase, like at least over 70 yards. It was already up. It was minus 125. I don't see how that he doesn't get to 70 yards. I like Burrow to throw two in over one and a half. And I my first touchdown I like is going to be Mike Gusecki. The tight ends have thrived against the Bengals. Fryermuth five for seventy five and Conklin eight for eighty four. <laughs> so, yeah, I would also Gesicki will probably be at like forty. I think that works. I also like Burrow's rushing yards. I think he might try to get on the move a little bit. So in my TD parlay, I put him the score, oh, a my. rushing touchdown. <laughs> I have Tyreek and Gesicki and Chase. Okay. Okay, so we have two TD parlays out there for you. Keep in mind, Xavier Howard is on that Miami defense, and he's been locked down this year. Plus, Jamar Chase hasn't been the Jamar Chase we've seen of last year because a lot of teams are realizing that this guy likes to get the ball thrown to him. So um, that is always going to remain an uneasy feeling for me early on this year sure. until the Bengals start to develop ways to get him into open space like they were last year. But I'm with you guys. I think Chase finds his way into the end zone again. He's done it at least twice this year. He went nuts against Pittsburgh in week one. He's had more of his more of a quieter week two and week three, but he was still targeted 19 times over the course of those two weeks. So they're still trying to use that heavy pass offense for that team. My only concern is, Last week was so gross when it came to touchdown scores that I don't want that to trickle into Thursday night football now. I don't want us to have to watch Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins score before Chase. I don't want us to have to watch Raheem Mostert get into the end zone this week after betting on him last week and not seeing a guy like Tyree Kill or Jalen Waddle. So um, my advice to everybody out there is pick and choose. I, I know those four touchdown parlays are juicy and they are very attractive, but maybe take two of them and then combine some player props like Troy said, or even take certain receiving yards like James alluded to and maybe throw an interception in there. Why not? I right. I love that. Interceptions have yeah, been huge. Both. I like I had Daniel Jones. For both it can guys. come that le- It can come that late too. Boom. Trying to force Fourth the ball quarter, down the yeah. field. Yep. Down three going with a minute left and they just overthrow somebody trying to force it. Any golf going on this weekend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is golf going Damn. on every weekend? Dude, yes. it is kind of crazy. Like, is like there a, a weekend? It's like a one weekend they're off. Is there only one? <laughs> like, is there an actual weekend that they're off? I think there's like two or three weekends throughout the whole year where there's a gap. I mean, like, that's insane. But that's, that's it. So awesome. It, it's cool. Yeah. It's great because I love that's watching so golf. Awesome. I just... I've never really paid attention or close enough attention to know if golf was happening every single weekend, which it seems like it, it right. is. So um, I'm going to deter this to James and Troy because they're uh, more in tune with golf than I am. James is the breadwinner, man. Get it. Uh, it's the Sanderson Farms Championship. That's what we got. Um, <laughs> like, you're acting like everybody knows what that Sanderson, is, which I love. Do you know? Get up. Come on, man. <laughs> James, James, I like I like playing this game with you. Hold on one sec. I want I want you to tell me where Sanderson Farms is located. <laughs> oh shoot! Um, I, God dang it! I re- I read it in an article too. Okay, I got I got it pulled up. If you pull this off, this is insane. Delaware. There's no way. <laughs> I don't even. I think it's. It's probably still on the West Coast. Uh, Washington. 
That's huge. You went West Coast. It was actually South. Mississippi is where. I knew Sanderson it too. Farms is yeah, located. that's where. Yeah. That's where, <laughs> from. All right. that's where Davis Riley's from. I'm on him. Oh. Uh, but anyways, so Sam Burns is the defending champ. Plus a thousand favorite. Uh, I don't like him. Uh, he, he. They said he played well in the Presidents Cup, but yeah, him and Scheffler look. Yeah, him and Scheffler looked rough, man. He hits a lot of. I don't good know shots. if it was just Scheffler, but um, do so, you think? Do you think I Lampkin like, Butts will be there? Lampkin Butts. Did you know he's the president of Sanderson Farms? <laughs> I don't know. This is this is risky. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can get a. Oh, it oh, hit the, his own the personal protector. <laughs> The he is the personal the protector of this tournament. I, sorry, Farms, sorry, cool. I had to bring that up. I, I'm Mr. Interruption today. Normally, I'm Interruption City. So, uh, but when I saw Lampkin Butts, I just I couldn't hold back there. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is risky. <laughs> James, restart. The sound that it makes. Restart because I did not even pay attention to anything because I was still trying to figure out how this guy did not get made fun of in high school. Oh, he did for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but. So six of the last nine. Oh my oh. goodness! <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, six of the last nine winners here are first-time winners. Uh, I'm on three guys that have never won before. Uh, one of them you might know, Raj, because it's Corn Fairy guy. Oh yeah. Uh, Taylor Montgomery. Sure do. Like one of the most yeah. One of the most popular. One of the most popular Corn Fairy guys. Dude, He's been eating. His story is incredible too. So Taylor Montgomery. If I remember correctly, what, oh gosh, I'll, if you want to find out what the story was, go listen back to our Pinnacle Bank Championship podcast on Heard at Sports because this story was crazy. I, if I remember correctly, he was the type of guy that like missed the cut by one stroke back to back years. Um, I'll, I'll look up the story. You go ahead and continue and then I'll, and then I'll butt in again. All right, yeah. Well, anyways, so he's known for his, like, driver. Usually he's a big ball off the tee. But uh, the last tournament he played in in Napa, he gained 11.2 strokes to the field putting, which is absolutely absurd. So if it's anywhere, like, even half that, and he gets his driving back to where it was, he's definitely going to be in contention. What, you got something? I, I got it. I got it. So he he was a caddy for his dad, right? Um. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And then he, his dad never played at the U.S. Open. Well, he got a sponsorship exemption to go play at the U.S. Open. And that essentially cost him a chance to later get his PGA Tour card um, later on that year when the PGA Championship rolled around because he chose to play in that tournament and didn't end up getting points for the Corn Ferry tournament that ultimately would have pushed him um, over the, the over tour. the edge to get his PGA card and then play for a year. But he did it, and it was so cool because he did it because he put family first. So he was, like, living right. the dream of the family and put himself on hold and then, you know, reworked his, his way to get back to the, the PGA he Tour. Knew he, so, was gonna, he knew he was going to make it. Yeah, he, he, he knew he was going to win. He finished, five. he finished twenty. Five. <laughs> he finished twenty sixth in the Corn Ferry Tour rankings, and the top twenty five get their PGA card. And then, if you fall in the twenty six to seventy five window, you then get pushed to the Corn Ferry Tour Finals, which is like a, a three weekend event. And he finished twenty sixth in that event too. So he missed the cut by one twice in a matter of a month. Plus five first That's round. That's insane. Stop it. I love Taylor nah, Montgomery. He's, he's coming. He's coming for next. Put money on that for me, uh, James. Another guy Another guy I like, never won, but he's just been playing out of his mind this past like four or five months is uh, Thigala, Sahith Thigala. Uh, he's just an absolute stud all around. Uh, and then Mississippi boy, that's why I can't believe I didn't remember where it's from, is Davis Riley. <laughs> he's also never won before. And he, uh, let's see, I had a stat on him. He's second in birdies gained over the last 50 rounds. Uh, and this place is like a birdie fest. Like the ending score is usually around 20 under. So I, that's a great stat to have going into that. The guru. The golf I, that, guru. That dude's on the shit list for me, man. I watched that dude blow on a Sunday so bad. Blocked him. 
<laughs> Riley, dude, I watched him throw a tantrum on 18 because it was one of the biggest chokes I've ever seen. I mean, like up like one or two with a couple holes to go and he gets like third. Wow. It was it was terrible. Like hit 18 T shot, like tied, like completely out of OB. Shanked it. It's probably like his 10th ten- 10th tournament ever. He's a rookie. Oh. Dude, it was that's why brutal. he's number one. No excuse. He's missing he's missing three foot putts, like slamming his putter down. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this guy You're doing? You're probably thinking of Siwoo Kim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, hey, this dude blew it. I was what I watched every, every hole. I was so excited. And then by the end of the round, he was throwing a temper tantrum. Oh, no. Nah, he's a beast. I love that guy. He does eat in the first round. I do. I, no. I have seen his name a lot in the first and like the round one. He's usually I. I think he's usually the opposite. almost like he's usually a guy I never touch because he's always coming from behind over the weekend. Like if he makes the cut, like I want to bet him top ten because his odds are insane. The only guy that I like that's always good on day one. It's Matsuyama. That dude always puts up like a score of minus seven and then can't win. <laughs> He's not playing. Well, I know that. I know that. But I didn't say I knew who was playing. I was just saying I always like that guy when he is. He is a beast. You would get your bet back if you bet him this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, transition to Friday. Um, as the MLB postseason inches closer troy do you like anybody dude i like some money lines with some teams on the bubble you okay. have to right it's gonna be the hardest these guys have been playing all year i like fun. obviously dude we struggle against the cubs but i like ranger against the cubs we'll get one if it's not today wednesday we'll get it tomorrow um i like the marlins it's out contra against corbin but again i need those brewers to lose so ride that with me um, I like, oh, I thought you meant Patrick Corbin for a second there. I'm like, well, that's that's easy. But you meant Corbin oh, sorry, Burns. yeah, Burns, yeah, my bad. Um, Seattle with Gilbert Logan. on the mound, and the Padres, Hugh Darvish is pitching. So I like uh, I like those teams on Friday. I love it. Lock them in. I think those pitching matchups are juicy, and I like the lineups that all of those people come from. So and all the lines were decent. Like nobody was crazy high. Because, yeah, it's just good pitching on both ends. All minus? Any dogs? I believe they were all minus, yes. Okay. No well, underdogs. That That's what I would recommend to do then. Parlay all four of those together. and Maybe maybe the Marlins? Maybe. Against the Brewers? That could have been like a plus 120. Maybe both minus 110. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that would make sense. Brewers lineup is better, but not not by much. Not Alcantara by much. will lock up the Cy Young if he hasn't already. <laughs> um. On Friday, too, I've been red hot picking football the past two weeks on Friday. I hit a parlay like I had uh, said earlier on in this show, but there's three teams that I really like on Friday. There's five games, but there's three teams that I really like. Houston minus two and a half against Tulane. The reason I like this is because every analyst out there and every public better out there is probably taking the green wave, taking Tulane. I'm not there. I, I'm not on that. I, I understand the struggles of Houston and their inability to be disciplined this year. But, guys, this team was ranked, nationally ranked, to start the year. They don't just hand out national rankings to teams. We've seen Michigan State plummet out of the rankings. We've seen Houston plummet out. But why were they in the rankings to begin with? Because of the players that they have and the ability to succeed not only with those players but with the coaching staff and the programs that they come from Tulane does not have a top 25 program if people were out there initially saying Houston is a top 25 team I'm taking them at home no doubt in this matchup Clayton Toon's got to be better I get that he'll figure it out though and he'll get back in tune in this matchup two and a half a field goal Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I remember seeing that, too, and I thought minus two and a half was a little crazy. It's criminal. Even. Me, too. Yeah. That's criminal. I Tulane's been great. They've been a really good team this year. But how often do you sit back in your chair and say, Tulane, now that's a team that I'm going to watch <laughs> and bet on. 
Um, Especially not, over Houston. Against Houston? What are we doing? This this seems like an easy lock for me. Everybody else will say, take the points with Tulane, but I think they're wrong. I think this is a game that we actually see Houston's offense start to explode. And I, their defense gives up a ton of money, too, or, or a ton of points, too. So feel free to um, maybe hammer the over in this game. But Houston in this game at home can't lose. They're at a point right now in their schedule where they can't lose anymore. They're two and two. This is a program that went 12 and two last year. If they want to get back to greatness, they have to keep winning. They can't lose to the two lanes of the world. Two and a half, easy money for me. Easy. Yeah, and that division to make it. comes inside of them. <laughs> Um, another game I like first quarter over in the UTSA middle Tennessee state game first quarter first quarter. And the reason for this, I was doing a lot of articles or reading a lot of articles and I saw one on covers.com, which really stuck out to me this season. MTSU has the third highest first quarter point total among group group of five teams with an average of nine points. Okay. UTSA didn't start the year that way, but can at least put up a field goal, if not a touchdown, because we saw that in their last matchup, they put up 14. And I think the matchup before they put up three, but the other ones uh, were either goose eggs or just both teams put up goose eggs in the first quarter. Yes, I, I understand where we're going, but UTSA is trending in the right direction to put more points up on the board. Middle Tennessee State won against Miami, ranked Miami last week because they put up 17 first quarter points on their own. Miami much better than UTSA in all facets of the game. If they can put up 17 against that team, they can put up 17 against this UTSA team. They may do it on their own. If it's 13 and a half, I'm taking the over. If it's 11 and a half, 10 and a half, I'm taking the over. If I can buy points, I'll probably go down to nine and a half just in case it ends up being 10. But more often than not with college football, you can't move that line down. I would still take 13 and a half. And I would parlay that, those two things together with Washington minus two and a half against UCLA. Washington's offense averages 530 yards a game while keeping offenses above 300 yards per game. UCLA mirrors those totals, but hasn't played anybody this year. Washington will pose the challenge to be able to win against this UCLA team. Those are my three games on Friday. I don't know if you guys disagree with me, but the way I've been trending with my college football bets Everybody else can screw off because I've been red hot on Friday. <laughs> you definitely read way more than I do. So. <laughs> um, and then on Saturday, James, who's Bama playing this week? Arkansas, number twenty. That's right. Coming that's off right. That upset to Texas A and M. And I hope it's a, I hope it's a better game, dude. I thought Vanderbilt was going to be able to do at least something to keep Bryce Young on the field, and it was fifty-five to three, and <laughs> Bryce Young had like. 400 yards and five touchdowns in the first half. It's hysterical. Like, you gotta be kidding. Hey, what's the line in that game? Oh, I have it. Minus 17 and a half. That's right. Yep. So, what do you like in this one? Uh, I like Bryce Young, of course. <laughs> Bryce. Um, we also got our uh, wide receiver back, Brooks. Um, and he ate last week 100 yards, had a touchdown, uh, two touchdowns maybe. Um, so if his props are up, I like him like 45, 50 yards and a touchdown. Uh, I always like Trayshawn Holden, same props, 45, 50 yards and a touchdown. Um, Bryce Young, two and a half. I don't know if I said that. And then, uh, if you can't, if there's no props up, I do like Alabama minus 10 first half spread too. That was the only thing they didn't hit last game, wasn't it? What? The first quarter. Oh, sorry. They hit the first half. Did they hit the first quarter too? Yeah. They did. Oh my god! It was twenty. No. it was twenty-one zero. I, I thought think. last game it was no. They didn't. Quarter. They didn't. Did so it pushed. It was fourteen to three. Oh. First quarter total was minus eleven. Um, That's you're right. right. You're right. So right. it pushed. Gotcha. Which yeah, is so dumb. That is so stupid. Because what's fourteen minus three? Eleven. It's eleven. If I take minus eleven, that should hit, right? I don't need to take this half point in order to hit that. I guessed minus eleven, they and it ended up being never eleven. Do full points. So yeah, that doesn't happen. Be. There right. should never be. It should be a half in everything, unless you're doing like 45 plus. 
You would completely get rid of that if you we just didn't do the whole number. That's we crazy. wouldn't even have the argument. That's absolutely crazy to me. So James, you like minus ten in the spread for the first half? Yeah. Oh yeah, ten. Yeah, that's fantastic. What do you think of this? Insane. What do you think of Alabama scoring thirty nine points in this game? So the reason well, the I bring game that was up close I mean, last year, wasn't it? They just they they don't play. They're not themselves whenever they're on the road. That's for sure. That showed a lot in the Texas game. Um, but I mean, they still they still play very well. Like, and they can still come out and play like they do at home. Like Bryce Young can come out and throw five touchdowns in the first half. Um, I don't hate it at all. Scoring forty. Well, over thirty eight and a half is minus one fifteen, and I actually agree with James. I really like that team total um, a lot more than I like the spread for the first half, to be honest, because that to me can just easily, easily change in one ruined. half of football for Alabama. Alabama could be down 17, 14 at half and end up winning that football game 48 to 44. If it ended up being a super close game like that. Now, both defenses are much better than the numbers I just presented, but you guys know what I mean. If they're losing, I could bet on Bryce Young to put up those 21, 28 points in the second half. So I, I think I like the team total more. Uh, that's just me. Now, some yeah. other games I like on Saturday, Michigan State plus seven and a half. For one of the same reasons why I brought up Houston on Friday. This is a Michigan State team that I think was like 11th in the country to start the year. So people were high on this team. And they rank in the top 50 in rushing success rate and explosiveness, explosiveness, excuse me, fourth best blocking grade in the country. Now is the time for that to get going again. They have not looked like that this season. But Maryland, the team that is they're up against, ranks 101st in power success rate allowed, 90th in rushing explosiveness allowed. Easy opportunity for Michigan State to take over. Troy, I see you smiling because you're like, who the hell finds that stat? A hundred and first. Like, that's so far down. And uh, <laughs> Michigan ran all over the Terps last weekend. They had over 200 yards. The only threat is Tua's brother, and he's been awesome. So we'll see if Michigan State can hold up. I think they can at plus seven and a half. I would even play down to plus seven. Um, but I... I think I like plus seven and a half. A lot of times with spreads, I will buy points just to be safe. So if I'm here at plus seven and a half, I'm like, what's the difference of doing plus ten and a half now at minus 170 instead of minus 110? I like to parlay things. That's why I give myself a little bit of buffer room. I also like the Michigan and Iowa under, which is 42 and a half. Don't do it. This could be a trap game, but it's a rematch. <laughs> Don't do it. The rematch of is that a barstool sweatshirt sure by chance? Is. We got to get you a hurt at sports Reppin things. It. I don't know. This is this is risky. Sure is. Oh yeah. my goodness! Blocked indeed. Right, you short. Don't bet on the under. Let's see if we get a, don't do it. Oh, it hit oh, the, the personal okay. protector. So here's why I'm betting on the under. Do Michigan it. lost some playmakers, yes, but is the second best defensive grade in college football right now. The first is Iowa. They are the best defense in all of college football. Iowa's offense is so bad that it's going to be a cakewalk for Michigan, so they won't even feel any type of pressure to score points in this game outside of that Maryland game when it got super close. It's going to be close. like 35. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like 35 zip. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I could see this game being 31 to 3. That's what I would say. So you think it'll be close? Yeah, 31 to 3 is super close. <laughs> to the yeah, over under, I mean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That'll be around probably uh, like where it is. Yeah, the 34 is where that would equate to. And if I take 42 and a half, I'm golden. I'm golden. I may even play up to yeah, 45 and a half in case of the 42 to 3 outcome. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And uh, last one. Uh, the over, here you go, Troy, show the sweatshirt again. There the it over is. in the West Virginia, Texas game, that's 61 and a half. Um, whether it's Ewers or whether it's Cards, both are big play names, and 
this is just a big play team, frankly. The Longhorns sit at 11th in passing success rate, and West Virginia, their secondary ranks 78th in the opposing category. Bijan Robinson is already averaging 6.1 a carry this year. And West Virginia's front seven ranks 118th in rushing explosiveness allowed. JT Daniels on the other end of the football has looked great in his new home. Bryce Ford Wheaton, one of his uh, wide outs, is making a name for himself. He's becoming one of the best Big 12 wide receivers this year. And Texas's secondary has been bad. Bad. Ranking 87th in passing success rate allowed. I mean... Those Whoa. those teams that I just listed off here on Saturday seem like pretty easy ads to a parlay and to help me get back into the money. All it takes is one. Man. That's all it takes. Yeah. One and you're back. Boom. Plus more. I hope, guys. I really do. This was such a and headache. Back. It was such a headache last week. Um, and if it's not on Saturday, what do you think I'm doing on Sunday? Huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to bet. I'm just going to sit sit on my hands. Yeah. Do nothing. Do nothing. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I think Nebraska could also win on Saturday. I think their only chance Never of winning team. this Never. year is against Indiana. So uh, just throw that out there. I think they can beat Indiana. And they're at home. It's homecoming. Why not? Okay, let's go into the NFL. Stop shaking your heads. <laughs> I believe it when Disgusting. I see it. Hey, hey, I'm a homer for this weekend. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. You going to start us off? You guys want me to go first? I talk way too much. James, you should go. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't talk enough. Um, so let's see. You know me. I like to stick to my running back wide receiver parlays for touchdowns. Um, the three can you send, slate has Can you send those to games. me, by the way? Can you send those to me after um, or before Sunday? Because I always forget to listen specifically to those, and those always end up hitting. So can you just like send me what you do? Oh, yeah. But you're, you're getting his saying, confused with mine. I think the three o'clock <laughs> slate has three games. What is that? I hate that. There's not even bye weeks yet. Yep. Well, guess what? You, I, you I have three like, chances to parlay those wide receivers together. I guess. Right. But uh, no, for the noon games, running backs, Chubb, Zeke, Jamal Williams, since uh, Swift's supposed to be out. Uh, Eckler, he's going to get his first touchdown of the year. Um and Derrick Henry, I think he was plus 100. It's disgusting against the Colts. That's free. Uh, that'd be like another throw 50 on that to save your weekend and make a 50 back. That'd um, be nice. <laughs> noon uh, wide receivers I like would be, uh, or I guess a tight end in this case, your boy Andrews against Buffalo. Um, DK Metcalf, Devontae Smith, Deontay Johnson. Whoa. Those are my wide receivers. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Like, who, who don't you like there? Oh, no. I just think all three of those names aren't like big caliber names that we've been talking about so Good far. Good payout. Yeah, the, the matchups are nice. I think there's going to be I think there's going to be some good games. Well, yeah, Devontae like Smith, scoring. he's been awesome. And he's a Bama boy, so I'm not shocked that you threw him in there. Um, oh, yeah. And then the Lions secondary has been trash this year. So DK is a good one. And the Jets secondary, that one's a toss up with Deontay for me because I think Sauce Gardner is going to be draped all over him. I just love Deontay. He he goes up and makes those jump ball plays that I love. Uh, I That's the reason I took him in like two fantasy leagues. I knew he was going to have the big ass target share all year too. Mm -hmm. So he gets at least seven to ten targets, which is nice. So. At least one or two of those come in the red zone. That'd be good. You got to hope. Got to hope for that one. Yeah, that, no, that, that's really there. my only worry hope for they you. they get to the red zone. It's <laughs> <laughs> the Jets, you'd hope. Oh, man. Um, okay, continue. Go ahead. Uh, three, if you want to go to the three o'clock uh, running back, since there's only those three games, I like CMC, Aaron Jones, and Javante Williams. Did you guys dude, see that's CMC? That's exactly what I wrote down, dude. Did you guys see? <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. CMC did not that's practice sick. today, Wednesday. He I didn't saw practice. That. So I'm assuming he's going that. to play. Because like he I, said, he had the comment, if, I, if he leaves to take a leak, he gets, he gets put <laughs> on the, the questionable tag because he missed a little bit of practice to take oh, a pee. Man. Quad. I mean, um, this dude's always hurt. And I just traded always. for him. This year, always, man. I gave up. I gave up Saquon Barkley for McCaffrey, um, but I also got Bateman in that trade. So I don't know. We'll see yeah, if it pays nice. out. 
And then just moving to the wide receivers at three o'clock, Hollywood, uh, Alan Lazard, and Devontae Adams to score for the fourth straight week. You know somebody else I really like, and I know that Packers defense is good, but Devontae Parker after after the week he had. Um, now Mac Jones obviously time, carries that questionable tag too, and we may see Brian Hoyer. So that's why I would say hold off until we know if it's Brian Hoyer, because <laughs> if you could choose Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, I mean, there's no question there. But uh, Devontae Parker went nuts last week, and I think he he's just a a cool option to to carry after having 156 yards. I agree. Yeah, I like that. I don't like. I don't hate it at all. Like I said, I think they could be down too, so throwing a lot. So garbage time, something come through. Uh, Troy, what do you like for the afternoon slate before we hit some primetime games? Afternoon? I literally did the well, you can, exact You can start same. with noon. You can start with noon. I'm sorry. Oh, like yeah, noon's sorry. the afternoon. My bad. Yeah, my running I guess backs, that doesn't I make agreed any with sense. Chubb and Eckler. Chubb and Eckler are fantastic. I think Barkley gets in. I also, being, again, a homer like Roger Nebraska, I think JK might score for the first time on the season. I liked Alvin. You said you, you mentioned him. Uh, I think Gabe Davis gets in against us going to the wide receivers. We tend to struggle against big, lanky receivers. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Smith, dude, that dude's so good. <laughs> and Mike Williams. I think even if Keenan plays, I still like Mike Williams. So do you like Devon? Do you guys both like Devontae Smith more than AJ Brown this week? Because I think not that's, that's not necessarily more. He's just going to have better odds. Yeah, better odds, and I think it's literally almost a toss up. Yeah, better yeah, value to the point to the point where both could score so easily. Like he was like two like, why not two thirty, and AJ Brown's like one thirty. It's mm-hmm. insane. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not questioning it at all. I'm just asking the question because I know people are going to be sitting in front of their bet slip looking at plus odds for AJ Brown and plus right. odds for Devonte Smith and saying, why can't I just take the guy that I know more than Devonte Smith? Now, not to say anybody should be sleeping on Devonte Smith after uh, week two and three, but keep Kirk in mind, been loving him. keep in mind, uh, AJ Brown is still AJ Brown. And that's what people are just going to have back here. They're going to keep it back there and be like, ah, oh, gosh, I probably should go with AJ Brown. But I'm with you. The juicier odds, the the better opportunity to make some big That's money about. is by putting in Devontae Smith. And if you're not taking a risk, why are you betting in the, in the first place? Yep. Uh, afternoon slate, Troy. You said the same running backs, but do you like any wide receivers? Same. CMC, AJ, J. Will, 100%. I think that's fantastic. And even if it's just three, stay safe, you know, because I know some of us are going to want to throw that Sunday night running back in there and you'll watch your parlay. <laughs> you'll stay up all night and watch it. Just go to shit. <laughs> you'll wait till 10 PM in yeah. the fourth quarter and mm-hmm. they got a chance to go down the field. They'll have 110 yards, Raj. It could still hit and not find the end zone. <laughs> and then uh, Sutton Dobbs. I like your boy Dobbs, James. And I, I agree on Hollywood. He boned me last week. He's bound to score maybe even a couple times. Romero? The target share. Is it Romero or Romeo? Romero, Romeo, I believe. Romero. Oh, is it? Did, Romeo. Okay. Romeo. Did you nice. no no second R. Did you know that his coach in college used to call him Dubs? Not Dobbs. That's what I've Dubs. been calling him. Because I, w- I saw on Packers Twitter that he was going by Dubs. Well, yeah, that's so I was calling that was, him it that. is a sick nickname. That was the nickname that he got because I mean, they lose a lot. So um, <laughs> it, makes, it makes sense. Yeah, week one. Um, I know you guys said you like CMC. I actually like James Conner a little bit more than CMC to get into the end zone, only because uh, the Panthers give up the ninth most fantasy points to running backs, and Cliff Kingsbury hinted that James Conner needs more involvement. So if he's playing, I'm taking James Conner in this matchup. They need to find a lead before I take a running back. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. They need to be catches. in the lead before Fair I can trust point. anybody. However, against backfield. the Panthers, that's a good opportunity because I that's don't like true. Baker Mayfield either. I would much rather see Kyler Murray have some success. Um, David Montgomery, most likely to be sidelined. Khalil Herbert's getting into the end zone again. That's just what that dude does. Whenever he can shine as the starter, he gets into the end zone. I know the Giants front has been very good this year, but I I really like him to get into the end zone. We saw that, um, didn't they play the Cowboys on on Monday night? 
right? It was the Giants Cowboys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we saw Zeke get into the end zone in the th- in the third quarter. So um I like Khalil Herbert to find his way in. Plus the Bears can only run the ball. They they don't know how to pass. Justin Fields is way too good to not be able to pass. Uh, until they figure that out, I'm not going to take Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, St. Brown, nobody. I'm not taking anybody in that um, in that wide receiving room, uh, per se. Uh, I like Derrick Henry a lot, like you guys had stated. I also like Rashad Penny this week, and I will uh, talk more on him in a quick second. But um, keep in mind, Alvin Kamara is still looking for his first touchdown of the year. So Another I think one. that could easily come in the London game. Um, on to prime time, because I don't need to keep the, the snowball effect going, just saying the same names over and over again. Um, I think we have two very interesting games. The Chiefs and Bucks is awesome. That's going to present a great matchup uh, scene to uh, uh, the Super Bowl of a couple of years ago. And Rams 49ers, uh, another big fun matchup on Monday night. We'll start with the Chiefs and Bucks. What do you guys like? Go ahead. Kelsey, Clyde, Evans, Fournette. Evans coming off that suspension, definitely going to get in the end zone. Fournette hasn't scored this year, going to get in the end zone. I think Kelsey and Clyde are almost locks every week, but Chiefs are definitely going to put up almost twenty over 20 points every week. So I think I think those four are pretty nice. I Dude, I am all about the QB odds to run it in. <laughs> whether it's a one yard sneak, whether it's Brady? a disgusting scramble, dude. Patty Mahomes is running one in. I agree with James on all those touchdowns. I had Pat Mahomes running it in instead of Clyde. I love Kelsey's yards, Pat's rushing yards, 10, 15. It's one play, one scamper. That's it. And Mike Evans over four or over 70. So Kelsey over 70 and Mike Evans over 70. I think we will see Kelsey eat in this matchup. I agree. Mike Evans, after a rest week. Um, oh, that was kind of funny. A rest week. <laughs> and uh, I like Tom Brady to uh, hit his odds for passing touchdowns this week. He's been quiet. And he is a much better quarterback than we've been seeing. I know he's dealing with a lot of issues off the field. But he chose to be on the field, and he can't keep performing like he is and stay a lethal starting quarterback um, for this Tampa Bay offense if he has these distractions and can't tune him out. I think he hits his numbers for passing touchdowns. I think Pat Mahomes hits his numbers for passing touchdowns this week. I love Leonard Fournette to get into the end zone this week. And I also really like my man, Juju Smith-Schuster, to finally get into the end zone. I bet on him last yeah. week, and it was gross Dude, me too. watching that game. <laughs> me too. Colts. I mean, like again, like you say, he's going to have to do something before I waste my money. It's very true. But every time I say that, the receiver ends up getting into the end zone. Best example, Allen Robinson. Um, so <laughs> I'll take I'll take a chance yeah. on Juju against uh, Tampa's secondary. Um, he he's he's been targeted a lot. He's finally getting the yards back, and at this point, it's about dang time that he gets into the end zone. So I think this is the week for him. Moving on to Monday Night Football, Rams Forty ers one really gross team, um, and another that. Uh, puts up a lot of points, but is playing against a really tough defense. So is this where you take the under, Troy? Unfortunately, divisional matchups, that's usually what happens. It's usually a very close, low-scoring game. <laughs> but three touchdowns. Debo, Cam Akers, Higby. <sighs> Tyler Higby. He's so gross, and yet I I keep bringing him up in every fantasy conversation. On. He is the number one tight end in targets. He has been overly productive for that offense. Can you believe Tyler Higby went undrafted in almost every fantasy league this year? It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Tight ends and QB rushing touchdowns. <laughs> uh, James, yeah, what do you like, like? Three touchdowns. Yeah, three, because I don't think the 49ers score twice. Um, you know how much Jimmy G loves Ayuk, so I like him again. And then I also like Cooper Cup and Cam Akers finally touching the ball now. So uh, unless they're just going to go every other week with him, 
looks like he might get in the end zone again. I think you get a little crazy here and expect the 49ers to win this football game. I could see it. And the reason for that is Matt Stafford is 2-5 and five against the 49ers all time, but he has very good numbers, so keep that in mind. But the Rams also haven't won on the road against the 49ers since 2018. So this seems like a, a another trap game, if, if people would like to use that term when they're betting on the Rams, because it could go either way. But I honestly believe that the defense for the 49ers, I know they haven't been good in the red zone, but they have been very good in the open field. They can easily disrupt Matthew Stafford into forcing mistakes and winning this football game by a score of 20 to 13. Easy. I think the under hits in this game, I think I'd bet the 49ers and I would still utilize some passing props for Matt Stafford because I think he's going to have to throw the ball to win this game. Now, Cam Akers, he's getting in the end zone this week. He will. So I like all those things. Anything else on Monday Night Football? Other than we're gonna win please, some money. Please win some money this week, right? <laughs> right. All right. Let's cue the music and play. Place a build a parlay. Troy, let's hear your contribution. I've thought long and hard about this decision. I do every week. And I mentioned him earlier. In the noon games, wide receiver by the name of Justin Jefferson puts, he finds colored grass or turf in the end zone. Justin Jefferson, anytime touchdown, lock. I love it. It's actually the pre-church game this week (laughs) in London. (laughs) I'm all for it. James, what do you like? Um, Also alluded to my guy earlier. Um Bryce Young. Is somebody panting? Bama. It's uh, my roommate's dog. It's, <laughs> it's Cooper. <laughs> no, it's, it's Moses. The oh, Moses is over there. I'm like, what am I uh, hearing? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, Bryce Young, two and a half touchdowns. Arkansas keeps it close enough to where he plays more than the first half. Even if they don't, he throws three in the first half. I don't care. Lock. I love this because when I was going through my options, I was so hoping I would have the last one on the sheet. And I'm, I'm taking this first. <laughs> I'm taking a noon start, and I'm taking a Rashad Penny first touchdown against the Lions. Take the odds. Whoa. We are risking big. We're putting first touchdown in this bet, and we are going first. to the promised land. I am separating the seas. We're walking on dirt, sand, whatever it was. We're separating this is, it. This is risky. And we're going. We're going These for odds it. are about to be ridiculous. <laughs> hey, remember what happened last time when I went out on a limb? Just remember. <laughs> This is a much smaller (laughs) and it's higher off the ground. (laughs) And it's about to snap. (laughs) So we have JJ anytime touchdown, Bryce Young over two and a half passing touchdowns, and Rashad Penny. First touchdown, no, baby. The hey, Lions have allowed seven rushing touchdowns this year. They're getting the ball first. He's finally getting into the end zone. It's happening right now. Build a parlay. Lock it in. Make some money with us because that's how we do it on big plays, bad days, and parlays. Anything else before we go, boys? What do you like? Throw out a random hot take if you want. I don't care. A random hot take. Hey, honestly, that was, was a good show. Hey, I was I all over those those running backs scoring their first touchdowns of the week mix in Eckler Fournette Kamara I would say first touchdown Ravens Bills Gabe Davis and if you want to get really cheeky you parlay that with a Devontae Smith first touchdown oh my goodness oh my goodness well um, we have our plays they're out there let's hope let's hope that they are big plays and not bad days when we come back next week delivering an episode next Thursday for Troy Aldridge James Merrig Andrew Rogers here we hope we win you some money on big plays bad days and parlays